So we're here, we made it. This is uh, competition day. It's my first competition in four years. And I feel uh, a mixture of, you know, I'm excited. I'm sort of somewhat emotional to be back doing it. I'm nervous, a little anxious. Um, as you all know who've competed, it's a weird sort of amalgamation of emotions. I do want to mention this competition that we're doing is raising funds and awareness for motor neuron disease. Uh, the page is Lift Me Up Weightlifting. There's a link on there to be able to donate. We're going to donate as well. If you want to learn more about the cause, and it is really important, we did a podcast with Emily Musket, uh, Olympian, uh, European champion, world medalist, who is hosting this event. Uh, so if you want to learn more about why we're doing this competition, why uh, she's put it on, she's raising money for it, then uh, make sure to check that out. I'll put a link down below so we can donate and help them raise as much money as possible. But um, yeah, we turned up a few hours ago, Nick and I. Nick's holding the camera right now. He's trembling a bit because he's nervous because he knows he's going to lose. Um, no, in all seriousness, I think it's going to be fun. Um, Nick and I are very similar numbers. I think we both know that I've probably got a bit of a snatch on him. He's probably got a bit of a clean and jerk on me. So we're just going to lift, see what happens. The goal is to just have as much fun as possible, honestly. First competition back, hopefully the first of many. And, you know, all I want to do is enjoy myself to motivate myself to then go on and do another one and, and then another and another. Last thing I want to do, a uh, nice dog run around it, is uh, put too much pressure on, you know, and um, and not enjoy myself. So I just want to have fun, uh, have a good time. Got my Red Bull, had a massive coffee, big breakfast, and uh, ready to go. See you in there. So I guess you probably didn't expect to see me uh, here so soon, uh, not on the platform. I'm just going to, <clears throat> I'm just going to say exactly what happened um, and then I'll get into how I feel about it. Um, warm up felt good, um, went out for my first attempt, 85 kilos, things were a little bit rushed in the back room but you know, that's irrelevant really to the story. Um, and. I just first attempt 85 kilos, caught it, went under it, and I, I sunk a little bit lower than normal, and it's sort of the hip flexion, deep hip flexion that's causing me issues. I normally catch it with a little bit more open torso, which is why I'm not going so deep at the moment. Just sunk a little low, and just felt my lower back just, you know, like shout out in pain, sort of like protection mode. Um, I did stand up with it, and then I dropped it, and then I just knew. I just knew straight away it was done. Um, so as I walked off, I said to a couple of people who I was with, I just said, back's gone again. Um, and they couldn't believe it, um, nor could I really. So I, I went over and I just said to um, the people who were running, I just said, I'm pulled out, I'm afraid. Uh, really sorry. Um, really sorry, but I'm going to have to pull out. So I'm, I'm gutted, really. Uh, I put in 
I, I didn't, you know, I put in some work for this competition, more than I have done for years, because I've not been able to train in a long time because of my back, but things were going well, um, to the point where, well, you know, for months I couldn't even, years, I haven't even been able to train at all. I've not been able to get beyond sort of 40 kilos without my back being reset. And, um, you know, the other day I snatched 90 kilos, uh, which is not a lot, it's like 75% of my best, but still, 90 kilos is 90 kilos, 50 kilos more than I was able to make on previous attempts. Um, I cleaned it up 105 last week, again, it's very light, but still. I, I, there was a big point in my life where I didn't know if I was ever going to put 100 kilos in any capacity I've ever had, so... Um, yeah, so anyway, I've, I've been sort of thinking, like, how do I talk about this? Uh, because I feel... I feel over... Mm, I feel sort of embarrassed about it. Um, because... Because a lot of people... Not a lot, you know. It's a small following, really, through weightlifting house, but more people are watching me do this than I ever thought would watch me do weightlifting. And for them to be watching me at a time where I'm actually the worst I've ever been at weightlifting in my career, by a long way, and then to try multiple times, have setbacks, and then find it's like, okay, this is the one, I'll do it now. And then one lift and I'm just done. I don't know why it's embarrassing. It just is embarrassing. Um, so, yeah, I feel disappointed. I feel frustrated. But it is what it is. I'm going to get an MRI um, and just take a look at things. I'm going to take a you know a couple of weeks off. I'm actually in Albania next week, which will be nice. So I'm taking a bit of time off anyway. Um, and then I'll come back and see, see where I'm at, get a scan in. Um, but I was thinking, you know, there are some good things that have come out of this. You know, one, you know, we're in a position where we get to raise money for motor neuron disease. And... That's a great thing. And so I was just thinking to myself when I, when I pulled out, I was like, well, I'm definitely gonna jump on the camera again and I'm gonna tell everybody to go and donate because that's a good cause and that's something that we can do that's actually gonna be beneficial um, to this world that we live in uh, and support you know fellow weightlifters, um, both elite and otherwise, like me, <laughs> um, you know, in their struggles that they've had. So uh, once again, I've, I've put the link down below to that. Um, <clears throat> I guess another thing was you know, in the back of my mind, this whole time I was thinking, if I go out and I go six for six, snatch 95, clean jerk 110 or 115, you know, first time I've been competing in a long time, first time I've lifted in a long time, it's going to be a great ad for the weightlifting AI. And that's what I was thinking. And that wasn't obviously all my motivation, but that was part of it, you know. That's part of it. Um, and I wanted to be able to say, look, this is the only program that's ever been able to take me to the point where... Um, well, where I can train multiple times a day because it has all of this cool feedback stuff. You know, takes you up, takes you down. I'm not going to go into it now because I don't want to pitch it, but you know what I mean. That's what I kind of wanted to do. Um, and that, that was my plan. At the end of the video, I was going to be like, huge thanks to weightlifting AI, quite rightly so. Uh, and then I got hurt. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> it's an odd situation to be in. Um, it's funny how the body knows, you know, like, uh, also, if I'm talking weirdly and quietly, it's because it's, uh, it's it's after midnight. I just I I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about. It. I was like, I gotta come up and do a little something. So that's why I'm sat here now. Um, yeah, the body knows. It's like all throughout the last few months, my back's been alright. I guess it had twinges, but it's been alright. And then the day of the competition, whatever it is, whether that's me, you know. I warmed up for like four times longer than I'd ever warm up for because I had those, you know, the classic pre-competition nerves where you're like, you know, I don't want to jump on the bar too soon because I know how that goes, but I don't want to be the person who's warmed up too early. Um, so then I'm just stretching, I'm just, you know, I'm rolling, I'm doing my quad, I'm doing my glutes, I'm doing all my exercises. By the time I get to the bar, I'm more mobile than I've been and I've probably lengthened the muscles in my back that are sort of acting contractually as a sort of... Um, safety precaution almost to to my lower back and you know I, I rushed through the last few attempts sort of had to jog a little bit out of the platform and I was in a bit of a stress I forgot to put my single up you know first competition in a while sort of nerves pulled it up um, and my t-shirt was all bunched up here so I was like oh, I'm looking stupid I'm reaching in trying to fix it the clocks are going down and I run out and I'm like okay well this is yeah it's 85 kilos it's fine I've muscle surface this I shouldn't worry about this set up, don't think about it, I don't think to myself, Seb, don't forget, you, this is just where you're at, like, 
this, don't look down on this weight, this is a real weight for you now. Um, don't treat this weight like it's beneath you. And I probably did a bit too much. I probably got a bit too cocky, um, a bit too carried away, and I just grabbed it, pulled it, caught it, and then for some reason I just kept sinking. <sighs> anyway. It's a weird one, it's a really, really weird one. Anyway, um, I'm gonna plug two things then. Um, the first one is go donate uh, to the motor neuron disease, um, to the charity that was sort of the whole thing to do with this competition. Uh, like I mentioned before, Emily Musket, one of the best weightlifters we've ever had in this country, um, lost one of her parents to it. And the story is, um, it's, it's tragic and it's moving and it's inspiring as well in many, many ways. Uh, the way that Emily was able to come back and, and you know, put on such spectacular shows in weightlifting. Um, I haven't gone through that. And you can listen to that podcast. It's on Weightlifting House. I uploaded it about two months ago, one month ago, six weeks, something like that. So go check that out. Um, and then the other is, believe it or not, weightlifting AI is brilliant. <laughs> it really is. Um, and I'm going to get, as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to jump back on because... You know, really, this sort of competition makes me realize that it's not really about what you hit in competition. It's about being able to train, you know, maybe for me, not day in, day out. I'm busy with stuff, but a few times a week, just getting in, getting in the gym, throwing down with Nick, you know, throwing down with Cody, lifting with everybody, having a bit of banter. You know, I'm going to out snatch you today. You're going to out clean jerk me. All my squats move faster than yours. And seeing progress. And you go to competition. You might PR, you might not. The goal is to PR. But for the first time in years, I've been able to do that. And that's not to say there are other programs where I couldn't do that. But also that is, I have tried other programs and I've just not, I've not had the level of responsiveness and feedback that has manipulated the program to reduce intensity and volume and pick it up and, you know, decide how many days a week I'm gonna squat and take into account these different things. And that's been the key for me to, um, to be able to be in the gym. So I didn't hit the PRs, but, well, I was never going to hit PRs. I didn't hit what I wanted, but I have had four months, what has it been? I don't know, four months of training. And if that's not weightlifting, I don't know what it is. So, uh, yeah, go check out weightlifting.ai. There's a link to that down below as well. And, um, yeah, if you're looking forward to seeing me beat Nick, it's going to have to happen again in the future, isn't it? I mean, I'm sort of loath to say stay tuned because who knows what's going to happen. But um, I think if I have it my way, I will. I'll get this MRI and I'll just check it and see where I'm at. Um, and I have so much to look forward to. I mean, yeah, we've got the Asian Championships in less than a month. I'll be out there in Bahrain and once again, weightlifting houses, broadcasting the sport to the world. Then there's the World Championships, we'll try and get a deal there as well, and that will be in December. And when I first got hurt, that was my motivation to start weightlifting house, because I had all this weightlifting, like, love, desire, um, passion that was just overflowing, and I would put that into my training in an intense way, uh, and my life and everything. And when that disappeared, I needed an outlet. So I started recording podcasts and writing articles. And then that turned into this. And then I turned into a business. And then I was able to hire people for the business. So ultimately, I made that kind of sacrifice of like, I can't train, but I can do this. I used to say on the podcast all the time, I said, no one's going to care if I snatch 120. Because that was what I was going for at the time. No one's really going to care if I snatch 120. But if I do an interview with Lu Zhaozhen, People get that actually make a positive impact on weightlifting. We'll get to learn something interesting about a top athlete who inspires people. So that was kind of my thing. So I can do this instead, and that's actually better for, for weightlifting. But I would like to do both. I would like to do something that's for me, which would be let's go on a competition, let's not get injured. But it's not even that, it's not even that. It's just being able to train. Being able to train, that's what we all love, isn't it? At the end of the day, we all love it. Um, so I'm going to jump back on weightlifting AI as soon as I've had my MRI and I've gone through the level of you know um rehab stuff that i need to do uh but yeah have no fear i will be back because it's in my nature i can't not i've been doing it since i was well i've been lifting weights since i was 11 i've been weightlifting since i was 21 
29 now, so. Probably gonna keep going, isn't it? Anyway, that's what happened. Um, if you're looking forward to seeing the lifts, I do apologize, but uh, you know, these things happen, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, thanks.